This video is gonna look at how to trade away bad contracts that you wanna get rid of. Maybe it's a contract you signed, maybe you're starting as say like I did, as the 2020 Orioles and you have Alex Cobb, Chris Davis, contracts like that. I'm just gonna briefly go over kinda of how I try to trade those contracts away. One thing about this in terms of settings, I am I have this set on um, how I normally play, which I went to the wrong thing there, is you go to AI settings and I have trading difficulty very hard and heavily favors prospects. I just feel the game is more realistic if I play on those settings. So I do that. So if you play your game, you, you will probably get different results on the trades if you have the settings set to the default normal. So just to walk through this, the, the Chris Davis contract is just too hard to try to trade. It's barely, barely not really worth it as an example. The Cobb contract can be moved. I would say it's not really worth it at this point in the game. I moved him later on in my sim, but I'll show you how I walk through it. Certainly there are contracts that I think are more movable in this game. Like if you take over with San Diego, Will Myers contract, which I'm sure the real Padres would love to get rid of, you can get rid of it on a deal that makes some sense and saves a good chunk of money. So the first thing that we're going to do to shop a player around who's got a bad contract is I'm going to uh, recommend, I guess, here that you retain 0% to start and go for regulars. What this will do is this will see if there's a team that wants to swap another bad contract with you. And the reason you might want to bring in another bad contract is maybe that guy has a year less on his deal or, you know, it's $2 million cheaper and it's a year less. Um, so while it might not save you much money this year, it'll save you money in the long run. If say you're, you know, Cobb only has two years left in this, but say I'm trading away a guy who has five years left and I'm taking on a guy who has three years left. Well, shoot, I'm not saving any money for the next three years, but it's going to be pretty awesome <laughs> after those three years when that guy's deal is off the books. So this will help identify if you retain 0% and just click regulars, or you can do veterans too. Um, it'll help identify those, those anybody that wants to trade contracts. And we do shop, and, and, and there's nothing. So then what I might do is I'm going to crank the retain way up to around 50% and see if anybody's interested at this point. And still, <laughs> nobody's interested in giving me anybody. Um, so let's go up to 75%. Is there any regular yet? So as, as you can see, this is why the, the Cobb contract is really hard to move, rightfully so. And like I said, in, in my simulation, I didn't move him right away because of this. Up here, see in this test game I'm kind of using for these tutorial videos, I'm in April 2020. So the simulations just started. I didn't move him for like a year after this when I finally had um, deals that kind of actually saved me money that were worth it in the last year of his deal. So if we go to 90% and find some regulars, still nada. Um, let's see if we go to 95. Might have to go to the next day for more options to shop. You can only shop five players a day. Oh, so now we're, now we're getting some bites here. Now we're getting some bites. Excellent, excellent. I would, so what I would do is I would, I would go through each of these players and do the process that I'm gonna show you here. I'm just gonna do it for, for one, but to get the best deal, you're gonna to wanna to do this with each player. So I'm gonna to go to the White Sox, and I'm gonna say, okay, cool, you'll get, you'll give me Adam Engel and you're ta you'll take on like a hundred some thousand dollars. Not even remotely worth it. And this deal in the end probably will not be worth it, but I'll show you the process of how you try to get a better deal to one that might be acceptable. So let's go, let's say 90%, what do you say now? Um, so you, you'll think about it if it's at 90%, but so I could submit it and let them think about it, or I could say, Hey, who can I add this deal where you'll take on an extra 5% and they'll give me a bunch of guys. So this is pretty, pretty handy. And that it's, it's, it's a long, uh, list of guys here that I could potentially get uh, or could potentially throw into this deal. And I, and I'm not recommending doing any of these things. You know, this is the point of this is not to say who I should trade or, you know, it's just, so let's say we're willing to throw in Marcos Duplan, who is a pitching prospect. Cool. So you're going to want to then see, well, did this really do much? And see, if you add somebody who they really like, you'll be able to take this percentage down further and further of how much you're retaining. 
So they're really only able to, they are only taking on uh, like $600,000 extra for me to put into Depon. That would not be worth it to me as rebuilding the Orioles. Uh, a young pitcher like Depon, I would not give him up to save six hundred some thousand dollars. So let's say, okay, well, what about another 5%? And they'll say, well, these dudes. Okay, cool. Jose Iglesias. Let's see Let's see what they think of them. So we're at 85%. We put him in. There's a lot to like in this offer, according to Rich Hahn. And let's see if he likes it going to 80. Ooh, okay. So we're at 80, and he still likes it. 75? Cool. Still likes it. Um, so at this point, well, the Iglesias deal is actually in, included in this, saving $5 million. So can we go to 70? So see, Iglesias, we've got this deal. Wow, they're willing to take on... We're still going. So at this point, I can get rid of 50% of this deal. And you saw how I did that. I just I just lowered this percentage by percentage here with where the mouse is with the red button. It goes down or up by 5%. You can use the green button. And then when they weren't saying they accept it, I'd say, okay, make this work. Tell me who you want. So at this point, I could give up Iglesias, who I would totally be willing to give up in this scenario because I'm rebuilding. And that saved me an extra like 35 percentage points on the on the Cobb deal. So that you know, that that's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> I would I would do that. I'd probably try to fi find a way to take Depon out. So I take Depon out. And he still likes it actually. So they're willing to eat fifty percent of the deal if I if I give them Iglesias. So Iglesias, I traded in my real sim and I actually got a decent prospect or two for him. So I'd want to take all that in consideration, but this deal just kind of in a vacuum is a pretty good deal. Um, so let's skip to the next day to refresh the amount of shops I have. And let's go ahead and remove these deals and let's go back to Alex Cobb and let's shop him. And let's say we want to see, well, okay, those are all the regulars and we've got that deal with the White Sox, but what about, can I actually bring somebody in who would actually help my team in the long run? Probably not, but let's say, you know, 90% of the deals seem the bar to begin to get offers, so, and we'll shop for prospects. And it's shopping and shopping. Still shopping. It's a slow shop. Normally that means you're not getting many offers. Yeah, nothing. Um, so let's see if we do 95, because that's what it took with the with the regulars when we shopped that. It's moving just about as slow, so if we get a bite, it's 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 not gonna be much of one, would be my guess here. Almost there. And then, you know, after this, the only option is to eat 100 percent and then try to scale it down by throwing in players on my end, still nothing. Wow, I, th I thought with 90 or 95, somebody would say something. All right, let's say 100%. Let's sit through one more fielding of the offers. Will anybody just give me a prospect to have Alex Cobb play for them for free? The answer might be no. Oh, look at this. Huh. All right, so let's say, you know, Trevor Stefan. There's actually a guy uh, who could be useful at some point here. He's 24. He hasn't. He's was in Double A last year. Okay, so I could eat. So I could have Trevor Stefan instead of Alex Cobb, and pay Cobb's salary. Honestly, as the Orioles in this scenario, that's probably better than just taking Cobb, <laughs> just keeping Cobb, unless you think at some point you're going to be able to trade Cobb uh, for something to get rid of some of that money. So let's say, let's go to 95. They say, nah, nah, man, we're not going to pay him any money. So, you know, obviously if you're the Orioles, you're not going to be trading Rutschman or Grayson Rodriguez, D.L. Hall, but but maybe you're willing to, you know, throw in Renato Nunez because the Orioles have 37,000 first basemen. And they say, sure, we'll do that. We'll, we'll take on 5% of his deal. But then you go to 90. So Nunez didn't really net you much. So let's go here. Let's let's add Iglesias again. See see if the Yankees like him as much as the White Sox. And they do. See, we've got it all the way down. So we can get it down to the Yankees will take on 25% of his deal. I'll retain um, 75%. 
the Nunez, I would probably just take them out of this deal. Yeah, see, that doesn't really change the equation much for them. They're still willing to do it here. And you get back a, a guy who can probably be a useful part of your bullpen. Um, I would, I would in this situation, much rather get rid of 50% of the deal and get back uh, whoever the – I can't remember who it was. Was it Angle or something from the White Sox? I'd rather just shed another 25% of Cobb's salary and – and knock it back Stefan. I don't think Stefan's that much of a difference maker. I think you just want to free up money. But anyways, that's the way you go through it. Just shop around in those ways, looking for regulars to see if there's a contract swap. Then look for prospects. But if you're looking just to shed the salary, you're probably going to want to stick with regulars or veterans looking for. But if you think, hey, I really want this bullpen arm, and it's worth taking on a few extra million of Cobb's salary rather than doing the White Sox deal, then do this. But then, and then just use this trusty red button, go down 5% of the time, and hit the make this work now button and figure out who who they'll, who they want in the deal to take it. So that's how you get rid of bad contracts. You're not going to be able to get up 100% of a deal like Davis or Cobb playing on the trade settings that I do. But you can at least free up some money to then invest in your farm system or your scouting or the draft or something like that, which as a rebuilding team is really important. So that's that.